All right, our friend Pierre Bjorn Michelson says uh, in a comment, Revelation 20, verse 4, Revelation 20, verse 6. So let me see if I can make this uh, really simple, really easy to understand. Now it says here in verse 4, They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. In verse 6 it says, They shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now let's replace the word reign with another word. All right. So they lived and danced with Christ a thousand years. In that sort of context, it would mean that they danced with Christ it does not mean that Christ dances a thousand years. Christ dances forever. He's always dancing. This is only talking about these people, they, dancing with him a thousand years. This is not singular. This is plural, meaning many people, right? not just one person again they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall dance with him a thousand years Jesus Christ dances forever All right. let's try to replace it with another word uh, let's say they lived and played baseball with Christ a thousand years you know we got baseball season starting this week so let's try to use that analogy. Jesus Christ plays baseball forever and ever and ever, but they play baseball with him for a thousand years. Again, they shall be catchers and pitchers and shortstops and shall play baseball with him a thousand years. This is talking about them playing baseball for a thousand years. Jesus Christ plays baseball all the time, every day, forever and ever. But this is only talking about them playing baseball with him for a thousand years. All right, there are probably better words to use to replace that, you know, to in order to understand and to teach this. But it, it very simply, it's not talking about Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. It's talking about they reigning with him a thousand years. And of course, those of us that are saved, we do reign with Christ right now. All right, and Jesus Christ reigns forever. And that's solidified in Luke chapter 1, verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So you cannot contradict this verse. You cannot go against this verse. Jesus reigns forever. All right. He reigns over the house of Jacob, and the house of Jacob is, is his body, his people, and his kingdom has no end. All right. And again, right now we are priests of God and of Christ right now the second death has no power over us right now those of us that are born of the Spirit of God we have everlasting life in us right now we shall never die right, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die we shall never die alright John 11 verse 26 and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die believest thou this right now the second death has no power over us right now we are priest of God and of Christ and right now Jesus Christ is reigning in our life and the reason why it's a unique time period is because this is a unique, you know, this is a unique time period because this is the time from Jesus on earth to the time of his 
return. Okay, so Jesus died, resurrected, and ascended to heaven and has promised to return for us. This is the unique time period that we live in. All right, so we want to get a little more specific. Jesus says, the nation of God shall be taken from you, speaking to the Jews, and given to a nation bearing the fruits thereof. Right? So this, so when Jesus takes the nation of God from a group of people and he gives it to whosoever believes in him, this is a very unique time period, a time period unlike any other in human history, right? Before Jesus said this, before Jesus did this, the nation of God was among a group of people. And outside of that group of people, Satan had influence. And, you know, they were outside of God. So now that's taken away from Satan. And now Satan is bound because he, because the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the world anybody and everybody all throughout the world the nation of God is no longer only a group of people it's available for everybody whosoever believes all right and now uh, when the thousand years is over it's the end of the world okay so when Satan is loosed at the end of the world he goes out to gather together the unsaved all right, so to go out and deceive the nations. So he was able to deceive the nations before Jesus took the kingdom of God away from the group of people and gave it to whosoever believes. All right, so there was the kingdom of God. God watched over the kingdom of God and outside of the kingdom of God, Satan was, de was deceiving the nations. Okay, does that help? Hopefully that makes sense. So now, Satan can no longer deceive the nations like he once did when he was outside of the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is available now to whosoever believes. Alright, and so at the end of the world, he's going to gather together his people, the unsaved, Right? This goes back to Genesis 3, his seed, the serpent seed. He gathers them together. Meanwhile, we are gathered up together in the air with the Lord. And just like in Genesis 3, verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right, so Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, and destroys all evilness forever at the end of the world all right again um first peter chapter two we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation all right whosoever believes in the lord jesus christ is the people of god which in time past were not a people but are now the people of god which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy all right so that's the difference okay that's the difference between before baby Jesus to right now and of course what's going on right now is not going to be forever this world is coming to an end okay and at the end is when With the, like say uh, for example Matthew 13 the, the end is when the terrors are burned all right so Jesus gives us a parable so that we might understand uh, he says let them both grow together talking about the tares and the wheat right but the harvest which is the end of the world is when the tares are gathered up the unsaved and they are uh, 
binded, <laughs> bound in bundles to burn them. But the wheat are gathered in his barn. All right, so this is all parallel here um, with Revelation 20 when it talks about the terrors or the unsaved are gathered together by Satan at the end of the thousand years and of course at this particular time is when we are up in the air with the Lord we are in a moment we are changed in the twinkling of an eye we put on immortality we are lifted up first the dead in Christ then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord just like it says till I make thine enemies thy footstool right <clears throat> so when this happens God sends fire down out of heaven and devours them all till I make thine enemies thy footstool so they're gonna be gathered together at our feet at the end of the world all right and okay so I think that's that's about as simple as I could put it okay I want to keep uh, teaching this until somebody gets it because uh, we live in a world of great deception and the problem is that these people all these people are teaching that unsaved people can wait that's what is implied when you say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years after his return all right and that's not true Jesus Christ reigns forever number one and number two the unsaved have no more opportunity to be saved when it's the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world there are no more opportunities for the unsaved to be saved so it's pure wickedness to say oh you can wait until after Jesus comes no you can't that's pure wickedness man you're misleading people and it's wicked pure wickedness okay right, let's go through we are not appointed to God's wrath only the non-believers and the pretend believers the pretend believers are the non-believers as well but that's right um, there's a huge difference between the wrath of God and the tribulations that we go through right and I pointed out this uh, numerous times in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world now this tribulation is not the wrath of God and Jesus is not speaking to unsaved people All right so when he says in the world you shall have tribulation he's not speaking to unsaved people be of good cheer I have overcome the world I'm gonna kill you no the tribulation is what we go through in this world in this life all right and this world is coming to an end we put our hope in a better world where there is no sin no sorrow no pain no death okay in the world we're gonna have tribulation it's gonna get worse and worse and worse and it's evident um, every single day things are getting worse and worse and worse and they're not getting better and things are only gonna get worse and there's only going to be more and more deception uh, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived all right Karen Ann Preston I think she gets it our reign with Christ we reign with Christ right now absolutely how can you rightly say that you are saved if Jesus Christ is not reigning in your life right now all right, NL reverse speech um, he says thank you for your answer I am now very glad that I asked you anyway whereas at first I was hesitant to do it with your answer what you have been trying to make clear for some time now suddenly becomes clear to me 
This realization is quite something. Another aspect of the destructive effect of futurism or placing things in a future so believers don't realize the authority they have now in his name. Excellent comment right there. Excellent. Because right now we are a royal priesthood. We're royalty. We are the people of God right now. We reign with Christ right now. Jesus Christ is in us and we are in him right now. We are saved, sealed, secure, sanctified forever. We are a chosen generation. All right. And we are called to preach the gospel to every creature. And again, I agree, you want this future futurism, this mentality, oh, that's going to happen in the future. No. The only thing that's going to happen in the future is Jesus Christ is going to come in the clouds of heaven, and it's going to be the end of the world. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. And think about this now. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. This parallels what we're reading in Matthew 24, where it says, All the tribes of the earth shall mourn. And of course, this is when the sun is darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And this is when he sends his angels to gather together his elect. This is when it's harvest time. It's the end of the world. He gathers together his wheat into his barn. And the tares are gathered together at our feet till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now, consider this. In verse 6, And he has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now the natural man, what's that verse here? Knows not the spiritual things of God but the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God right and and so when people read this are you reading this in a spiritual sense or are you reading it in a natural sense in other words you know the kings of the earth like um, you know uh, uh, Joe Biden is the king of America. All right, they call him president. It's the same thing. All right, and then whatever country I don't know who are the kings of this earth or you know of every country. I don't I have no idea. But you think of the presidents or the kings of this world uh, of this earth. This is not what this is referring to. Right, and it's also not referring to. Uh, you know, Catholic priest, you know, Reverend Schmitty, all of us that are born of the Spirit of God, we are all kings and priests of God. I showed that to you already. We are a royal priesthood. We are royalty. We are the kings and priests unto God. Those guys, you know, in the big houses, in their mansions, and lording over entire countries, those are not the kings and priests unto God. They are kings of countries. But they are, but we that are born of God are the kings and priests of God. We are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Right? We are the people of God. And this is not a, in a physical world that we have thrones, you know, 
this is all in a spiritual world an everlasting world a world without end there's a great difference between the spirit world and the physical world now when this physical world comes to an end there will be a transformation we will be taking off this mortality and putting on immortality all right so um let me finish with this verse here it does not yet appear it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is all right so hopefully I've given somebody something to think about and um, my hope is that somebody someday figures us out because this is this is getting stupid somebody erased their view there was a video before mine now it's gone I'm not sure what happened but uh, hey that's great maybe somebody figured it out the, this idea of a millennial reign it's pure wickedness okay because when it's the end of the world it's the end of the world there are no more chances for the unsaved people and you're lying to them when you say that there is a thousand year period after the return of Jesus whereby they can still get saved that's not true that's not true at all